Welcome to Maker Fair, and welcome to the Make Electronic Stage. My name is Andrew Terranova. I'm going to be presenting Getting Started with Arduino. Uh, by show of hands, who is uh, an expert or considers yourself an expert on Arduino? OK, not very many people. That's good. Uh, who considers yourself a brand new, totally new to Arduino? OK, you're at the right presentation. And, uh, and who is sort of maybe intermediate, knows a little enough to be dangerous at Arduino? OK, that's me. Good. So as long as I know more than you, we're cool. So uh, if you don't know too much about Arduino, what's it good for? Well, just about anything you want. It's a microprocessor. It, gets, it, it has inputs and outputs. And I'll explain a little bit about that. But what it means is you can monitor something on your inputs, run a little program to do something with that, and then have an output. So you can use it for prototyping and making circuits that do, do cool programmable things. You can hack and turn junk into cool stuff. And of course, you can actually learn how to program instead of just, you know, hello world or whatever. You can actually make something cool. And so you're building a project and programming it and learning how to program at the same time. So for example, these are just a few examples of things people have done. There's the monkey couch guardian. You know, it, it senses that somebody comes close to the couch and then it reacts by doing the, the clappy clappy thing, right? Um, I always found that things a little scary. Or you can have like a gumball machine. Instead of putting a coin in, you get a secret knock. It recognizes the patterns, and that's your input. And then the output is it actuates a little electro uh, electric solenoid and opens the gumball drawer, and you get a gumball. Input, processing, output. Or uh, you can actually log data, too. So you can do it for learning and scientific and education stuff. So this is a sun logger. You can collect you know, uh, the amount of uh, solar radiation over the course of a day. right? But those are just a few examples. You can do just about anything you want. How do you learn about Arduino? There's a lot of great resources to learn Arduino. Uh, Arduino's own website is a really good resource, uh, arduino.cc. They've got a great reference. That's, I often refer back to it myself. Uh, we also have in the Maker Shed, which you'll find uh, here at Maker Faire, uh, a couple of good books on, uh, making, on using Arduino. There's a Getting Started Kit. For Arduino ends at 12:30 today only. Michael Arduino, the author of Make an Arduino Controlled Robot, has his own presentation on learning Arduino using robots. So that's a great presentation. Okay, so what does an Arduino look like? There are a few different makes. Uh, there's a few different models. Uh, these are like sort of the four main ones that you'll see: the Uno. Uh, the Leonardo and the, uh, the Mega and the Due. So the difference, let me break it down for you. Basically, the Uno is a good starting board to go with. It's got, um, it's got 14 digital input and output pins, right? So let me explain digital analog. If you want to know if something is on or off, or you want to turn something on or off, that's digital. It's either a 1 or a 0, nothing in between. Analog. If you want to know a range of numbers, like how bright is the sun as opposed to is there light here, okay? then that's analog. Or how loud is the sound, right? Analog, there are only analog inputs. Digital, you have input and output on the Arduino. Uh, so one of the important things when you're trying to pick which board do I go with, because there's a lot of them, is uh, how many inputs and outputs do I need for whatever I want to do? So the Arduino is a, nice, uh, a nice starting point. Like I said, 14 digital inputs and outputs, six analog inputs, and um, it runs at 16 megahertz, blah, blah, blah. The Mega is a good choice if you have a lot of I.O., a lot of inputs and outputs. It's got 54 digital inputs and outputs, 16 analog inputs. And then when I said you couldn't really have an analog output, it's sort of a lie. Uh, you can have there's 15 of what you called PWM, or pulse width modulation. It's really digital, but it's putting out pulses instead of just on or off. It's pulses of on. So the more pulses of on you do, uh, the more it looks like it's only a little bit on. So for example, if you had a, an LED and you just turn it on full bright, it's on. If you pulse on, then it's a little dimmer. And how ma however many pulses you do in a certain time period, that's pulse width modulation. So you can make a LED brighter or dimmer with pulse width modulation, or PWM. So that's what that's about. OK, the other two on here you see are the Due and the Leonardo. Um, the Due, th they have different processors, different technology behind them. They're all um, 
Uh, the Douay is actually an, an Atmel. Uh, I don't want to go into the processor names. It's too much. But the Douay also has a lot of input output, 15 digital, uh, 12 analog. The Leonardo has 20 digital and 12 analog. Uh, the other thing about the Leonardo is it has a built-in USB support. And uh, some shields, OK. Does anybody know what a shield is? Nobody knows what a shield is. A shield is like an add-on board. And that's what in, in Arduino, you'll hear this term shield. I'll talk about it more later. But basically, it's an add-on board that slides right on top of it. And it adds functionality. So some shields with the Leonardo that depend on um, certain protocols won't work with the Leonardo. So that's something to check. The Due, um, the other th thing about that is um, it's a 3.3 volt board. The rest of them are all 5 volt boards. So where this comes into play is if you're interfacing to something that runs on 5 volts and you have a 3.3 volt board, you could blow it up. So don't do that. Um, OK, a little bit more. There are some new family members to Arduino. Um, on the one side, we have the Arduino robot. That's a new thing. Uh, so it's uh, on board, got an Arduino built onto it, and it's an actual robot kit. And the other one is the Yoon, which is a new thing as well. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it adds Wi-Fi capability. And it's actually got a bridge between sort of a, a Unix Linux running side and an Arduino running side. And it's for sale for the first time in the US here at the Maker Shed. So that's kind of brandy new. OK, so in case that wasn't confusing enough, there are a few other choices. There's the um, Explora, the Arduino Ethernet, the LilyPad, the Micro, the Nano, the Mini, the Pro, the Pro Mini, and the Fio. Everybody got that? No? OK. Um, basically, what the thing to know about these boards are if you have a very specific project. So for example, the LilyPad has a nice little round form factor. It's great for like sewing onto a wearable, a badge, or a piece of clothing. Um, the Explora is similar to the Leonardo, but it has built-in sensors. So if you want to just get started real quick, uh, you can go with that. Built-in Ethernet capability, go with the Ethernet. So you would only look at these boards if you have a specific need. Uh, if you just want to sort of a get, get started quick, the Uno or one of the other ones is a great start. OK. Here's the Arduino in brief. Uh, this is the Uno. It's got a reset button. Your digital I.O. pins, I talked about those. Those are along the top. The, the long chip, that's the brain. On the bottom, you have your power and analog pins, where you get like a input, analog inputs. And then uh, you can get power either from your computer on the USB or through a plug-in like DC power wall converter. Shields, I talked about those, right? There's all kinds of shields. There's shields that drive motors. There's shields that drive LEDs. There's shields that drive you know, just a circuit board where you can prototype whatever the heck you want. So you see that word shield. Look for it. People can also like, make their own custom shield. So if you are thinking, I want to do this with my project, I wonder if somebody's ever done that. Just search for whatever the heck you're looking for, shield, and it might have already been done. Or maybe you want to do it yourself, and you just buy a board and do it. Um, the bare minimum to get started is your computer. There's a, um, a programming interface I'll show you in a minute. You need a cable that connects to your Arduino, and you're good to go. This is the. Uh, this is the environment. It's multi-platform, so it'll run on a different operating systems. Uh, you install the software on your laptop. You program it there. Uh, you start up your Arduino, and then you just push the program into the Arduino. And as soon as it loads, it starts executing your program. The basic program that like, everybody has, and it's, it, you know, it's like a default, is, is um, the Blink program. So when you first get your board, your new board, you load the Blink program, and it blinks a little onboard LED. And then you know your, L your Arduino is working. And then if you want to have fun, you change the blink rate, or you make it pulse with that PWM function. And then you start to learn how to program if you are not an experienced programmer. If you are an experienced programmer, you know what hello world means. So the blink program is like the hello world of, uh, of the Arduino. This is how you load a sketch. Um, you know, you, it's very simple. You can pull examples down, and you just push it out. That's basically it. That was Arduino in like 12 to 14 minutes. Do I have time for questions? Or we, yeah, I have time for a, a couple of questions, um, if anybody has a question. Oh, one in the back there. Uh, OK, sure. So uh, the, the Arduino programming language is very C-like. It's sort of a, they, but the, what they've done is they've, um, 
They've abstracted a few things and hidden them in libraries. And when I say hidden, not, not very well hidden. It's like, here they are. You can go look at them. You can mess with them. You can write your own if you want to go do that. But if you don't and you just want to like make your LED blink or call a, motor a, ser a servo driving library or a motor driving library, somebody might have a library. And there are many, many libraries already written for you. So all that stuff can be hidden, or you can dive into it. Other, I'm sorry, I don't know if that answered your question a little, but we, you know. Anybody else? Really? All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, check out Michael Margolis' presentation if you like robots and you want to learn Arduino in the Maker uh, Shed stage. And uh, again, have a great time at Maker Faire.